Good news. Yes. We begin, though, with our one-on-one -on -one interview with New York Governor Andrew Cuomo just over 100 days into the coronavirus crisis that hit his state harder than any other. New York reporting nearly 385,000 confirmed cases and over 30,000 deaths. New cases and hospitalizations finally decreasing, but the crisis is certainly far from over. All of this as the protests now calling for change sweep this nation and New York. The governor weighing in on police reform in the state, but we began with the pandemic and what keeps the governor up at night? We've seen what's happened in some of those other states, the Ozarks and Arizona, places where we're seeing spikes. How concerned are you that New Yorkers are now letting their guard down? I'm concerned because it's human nature. Uh, we test every day. We get numbers every day. You can't lose the focus and the discipline because you tell me how New Yorkers behave tomorrow. I will tell you the infection rate a week from tomorrow. The, it is that closely linked. As the governor of the hardest hit state in the country, Governor Andrew Cuomo has spent the last 100 days leading New Yorkers through the coronavirus pandemic. In one word, can you describe the past 100 days? Hell. Can I say that? <laughs> yeah, you can. I think that's there. We were the worst per capita across the globe. We had a higher infection rate than countries. So uh, we took dramatic action, and God bless New Yorkers. They all rallied. They got it. Uh, I gave them the facts literally on a daily basis, and they acted intelligently and responsibly, and we now have the lowest transmission rate of any state in the United States. So. Uh, I like to say we went from the worst infection rate to the best infection rate, but it's all because of what New Yorkers did. What still keeps you up at night? So many things. We still don't know uh, where we're going with this. Uh, no one can tell you. I talk to global experts every day. Uh, people have gone through China and South Korea and Italy, etc. But nobody really knows, is there a second wave, is there not a second wave? You look at what's going on around the country now with the uh, spike in the number of uh, viral transmissions. That is frightening. You know, New York is not an island. Uh, we can be doing a great job and getting the spread down and the rate of transmission down. But uh, people travel here from other states. You've been commended for your clear and your calm leadership. People from all over the country and the world have tuned into your press conferences. Your statewide approval rating, a career high 84%. You came in second only to President Obama as the most trusted Democratic leader in America. How do you intend on spending that political capital that you've earned? Well, hopefully it gets us through this pandemic. Uh, to the extent that people trust the information I've been giving them and trust the decisions I've made based on that information, uh, just let's get through this crisis. Some critics have suggested that you ignored early warnings about the severity of this disease and that if you had shut down a week earlier or two that lives could have been saved. Uh, I believe that the former CDC director Tom Frieden says you could have cut New York's death toll by up to 80%. Obviously now we have information we didn't have then, but do you regret now with the information you have now not shutting down New York earlier? Well, we didn't have the information then. Do you feel responsible for the New Yorkers who died in this pandemic? I think the res New Yorkers who died did not die because we failed them. We got them a hospital bed, which we didn't know that we could. We got them a nurse with PPE, with a mask, with a gown. We got them a doctor. We got them a ventilator. Everyone who died, we did everything we could. As he faced New York's surging COVID-19 cases, Governor Cuomo also facing off with President Trump at times. The President of the United States calls the shots. How many times do you want me to say thank you? But I'm saying thank you for doing your job. The president's position was the states were in charge. States, the governors, the governors, the governors. Yeah, but the federal government is nothing without the states. We have to work together. There are things that the federal government has, assets that they have that the states don't have. You know, I'm calling China to buy PPE. Every governor is calling China to buy masks, right? It made no sense. And when we agreed, we agreed. And when we disagreed, uh, we disagreed. And I said to him from day one, uh, forget the past, forget the politics. 
uh, I'll call it straight the way I see it, and he'll call it straight. And uh, when it worked, I said it worked, and when it didn't, I said it didn't. If you had to give President Trump a grade on how he's handled this pandemic, what would you give him? I don't grade him. He can grade himself or a higher being or the people of this nation will grade him come election day. What grade would you give yourself? I would ask the people to grade me. When it's all over, I would ask the people to grade me. More recently, Governor Cuomo urging people to stay safe as New York reopens. And while participating in demonstrations for the Black Lives Matter movement, the governor now focusing attention on plans for reforming police. What sort of reforms are you planning to institute in this state in the wake of the murder of George Floyd, police reforms specifically? We've enacted a number of nation-leading reforms. We uh, passed uh, laws and I signed laws that ban chokeholds, that release disciplinary records of police officers so people can see if there were any prior issues. Uh, we appoint the attorney general in this state, a special prosecutor for police misconduct. Uh, and then we do something that I think is a first in the nation that's going to have a dramatic effect. We say to every local government and every police department, you have to come up with a plan that reinvents your police department over the next nine months. Because it, it's, it's as complicated as it is, is as simple as it is. The relationship between the police and the community is frayed or broken. I think uh, Mr. Floyd's murder was one in a long list. It was a tipping point. It was an explosive point. But this was long overdue. It's, it's about making change. You can't really get a divorce here, right, between the community and the police. Divorce is not an option. Uh, you need public safety. Okay then you have to go to the table and work out a new relationship. You've said that you have no political aspirations beyond the job you're in right now. Right. A lot of people are asking why. Why not think about something grander, bigger, presidential? Because I support Joe Biden for president, and I believe uh, he's going to be the next president. I am not running for anything. I am governor of New York, and that's all I want to be. Would you accept a cabinet position no. in the Biden administration? No. That was a quick no. No. Nope. <laughs> Why not? No, I'm not going. I was in the cabinet. I was in Bill Clinton's cabinet. Been there, done that. That's one of the reasons why they distrust politicians, because they think there's a hidden agenda. I don't want to go to Washington. They couldn't drag me. They couldn't force me. I only represent the people of the state. I have no agenda besides theirs. A very clear-cut, strong yeah, answer there. We're yeah. going to have a lot more with the governor coming up at our next hour, including what he says about reopening schools, riding mass transit, and who he turns to for inspiration right now. It's a very powerful interview, and he is no holds barred. He says exactly what he's thinking. As you know, that's his style. Well, you can see that, and you <laughs> ask the tough questions. I tell you that much as well. We cannot wait to see that, Amy. And coming up next.